have you ever wanted something so badly that you would have done anything to get it? And then partway through your journey to get that thing, in the middle of all the pain and all the suffering and everything going wrong, you stop and you say to yourself, what on earth was I thinking? Well, that's pretty much the story of my life. Picture this. It's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm lying on my back, and I'm pedaling this human-powered vehicle around a racetrack at a speed of about 45 kilometers per hour in the dark. I am wedged into this capsule that fits my entire body so tightly, my shoulders and my elbows are actually bleeding from constantly rubbing up and down on the inside of the carbon fiber capsule shell. I've got no room to move any part of my body in there except my lips to suck liquid food and water out of this tiny little tube and my hands to operate a steering bar maximum of about a quarter of an inch either direction and of course my legs because I was pedaling this beast as fast as I possibly could. It was November uh, 25th, 2005 and I was on this three kilometer test track that was owned by Auburn University cut out of the forest in Alabama. And I was attempting to travel farther under my own power in one day than any person in history ever had. I was challenging a world record. I had exactly 24 hours to pedal as many laps, as many miles of this track as I possibly could. Now the existing record that I was trying to break was set in 1995 by a German professional cyclist of 1,021 kilometers. That's the distance between here and Vancouver by bicycle in one day. Most people probably never drive their cars that far in a single day. And I had to pedal this uh, bullet bike at least that far to break the current world record. So I've been circling this racetrack relentlessly nonstop now for the last 17 hours. As you can imagine, my legs were aching and my lungs, they felt like they were going to explode on every single breath. Since I can't get out of my capsule, I actually have to pee into a tube fixed to me by catheter. So I'm drinking uh, liquid food and water out of one tube and I'm just praying that my pit crew hasn't somehow mixed up those tubes in there. <laughs> Lots of tubes. Very complicated situation. So sweat was pouring down my forehead, stinging my eyes, making it very difficult for me to concentrate seeing out of my tiny little canopy dome when it was over 35 degrees Celsius inside uh, my little solar oven during the heat of the day. Um, but now in the middle of this Alabama winter night, it was actually very close to freezing, so I was struggling to stay warm, even though I was kind of hammering away on those pedals. Since I was barely on that minimum record pace required to break this existing record and nearly ready to pass out from exhaustion, I had to focus all of my energy into just continuing to turn those pedals over and, and also to fight every cell of my body that was screaming at me to stop. So what was I thinking? Well, I was thinking that I wanted to travel farther in one day under my own power than any animal on the planet ever had except for perhaps a few migrating birds. And to do that, I had bitten off way more than I could chew and I re was realizing that now I had to deal with chewing it. My story is one of a very, very average guy with big dreams. You know, I've never been the smartest guy in the room I got through high school with below average marks and I didn't get into university, I went to state instead. Um, I didn't have any money when I was starting out either. Credit card debt and student loans meant that I had to start earning a living immediately after leaving school. So I went out and got a job uh, working for an oil company and I was laid off about three months after I started due to the recession that was going on at the time. So I struck out on my own and I actually started my own company and I guess I kind of felt that uh, since I didn't have uh, much of an education and there weren't many jobs available that perhaps entrepreneurship was how I was going to make my fortune and that didn't exactly work out as I envisioned it after the banks took all my credit cards away from me and Revenue Canada declared that I was actually living below the poverty line for four years in a row I kind of came to this realization that this road to riches plan of mine was probably going to take a little more work than I originally thought I 
don't consider myself a naturally talented athlete either by any stretch of the imagination. After about a dozen years of sitting behind a desk pursuing my entrepreneurial dreams, I went and stepped onto the scale one day and I was absolutely shocked to learn that I needed to lose 50 pounds. So I went out and I signed up to compete in a triathlon. Now, most people, when you want to lose a little bit of weight, what do you do? You join a gym or something or start a diet, but not me. No, I had to go and sign up to compete in the long distance Ironman triathlon. <laughs> and then I had to sign up for swim lessons because I didn't even know how to swim. I mean, what was I thinking, right? Can you imagine 1,500 people running into the water at the start of the race and one of them's wearing a life preserver? <laughs> but you know, the simple fact that I signed up to compete in the Ironman triathlon, one of the most difficult sports in the world, without even knowing how to swim, kind of says it all about me. And this is very typical of the kind of attitude that I've had for most of my life. Ever since I was a child, I've had this belief that I could accomplish things that were always beyond my ability. And time and time again throughout my life, I've bitten off way more than I could chew. And, you know, I've made some pretty crazy blunders in the process, believe me, and we're going to talk about a couple of those today. However, 